Hi, my name is Tom Heffel, and this channel is all about helping students learn chemistry. In this video, we're going to be talking about how we collect gas over water and solve a stoichiometry problem. So the prompt for today's lesson looks something like this. You want to take a screenshot of it, and then I'll kind of help you out and look at it as we work with this video. Okay, so here we go. It says hydrogen gas okay, is produced when zinc reacts with sulfuric acid. Okay? And it gives us some information about the hydrogen. Okay? It says if 159 milliliters of wet hydrogen, so 159 milliliters is a volume reference, okay, because the unit is milliliters. And they say that it's wet, and that's because it's collected over water, of which I'm going to describe here in a few minutes. Okay? It has a temperature of 24 degrees Celsius, so we have the temperature as well. Okay? And it says that the barometric pressure is 738 torr. So I'm going to put this as the total pressure of 738 torr. And then the prompt is asking how many grams of zinc have to be consumed at this pressure or, you know, in this experiment. So the question or the prompt is asking for grams of zinc. And then it tells us a little bit more in the parentheses. It says the water vapor pressure at 24 degrees Celsius is found to be 22 torr. Okay, so I'm going to put the pressure of the water vapor pressure is going to be 22 torr at this temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. Okay, so there's an important piece of this prompt. Okay, and in this prompt it says collected over water. So I kind of want to explain that process. Okay. So if you're doing an experiment, what you would do is you would fill up this glass collecting tube, you'd fill it up with water, okay? And then you'd make the chemical reaction take place at, at the bottom because I'm going to invert this, okay? And what you do is you invert it into another cylinder, like a gigantic graduated cylinder, and you place it in here, okay? Well, the chemical reaction is going to start to take place, and it's going to start to fill up the tube with gas, hence the name of this being a gas collecting tube, uh, also called an udiometer if you want to get really uh, technical. Okay, so basically, what I have this is drawn over here. Okay, here's my graduated cylinder with my gas collecting tube. I have it filled with water, and I'm going to have the zinc and high, uh, and the sulfuric acid, sorry, react down here. Okay, now as they react it's going to form some hydrogen gas. And what does ga gases are less dense, so they're going to bubble up, okay? So you're going to start to get some bubbles, and it's going to start to collect here at the top. And it's going to push out the water and sulfuric acid out the bottom, okay? And so we can measure kind of like the volume that's collected in here. However, there's a big issue when you collect a gas over water. And this is a piece of information that a lot of students overlook. So this is a very, very common mistake when doing this type of problem, is not realizing that there's two gases here. The hydrogen gas that's produced in the chemical reaction, plus the gas from the water that's kind of like evaporating, if you will. Okay. So whenever you collect a gas over water, that gas is present but so is some water vapor, and that's the detail that people overlook. Now, it's in the prompt. Sometimes you have to go to an appendix and look it up, okay? But it's in the prompt, so it's really telling us, hey, you need to consider the water vapor in here with the hydrogen gas, okay? So basically what we have is that the total pressure is going to be equal to the pressure of the hydrogen and the pressure of the water. When I use PV equals NRT to calculate the moles of hydrogen, because I'm going to do that soon, I can't use the total pressure. Okay? I can't use the water vapor pressure. I can only use the pressure of the hydrogen if I'm trying to find the moles of hydrogen. So let's go ahead and figure out the pressure of the hydrogen first. Okay? So I have the total pressure, which is 738 torr. I want to figure out the pressure of the hydrogen, and I actually have the water vapor pressure, which is going to be 22 torr. So if I want the pressure of just the hydrogen, what I'm going to do is take 738 and subtract away 22, okay? And when I do that, 
I get a pressure of 716 torr. Of course, I'm going to be using PV equals NRT, and I don't like things in TOR. I like them in ATM, so I'm going to convert the TOR into ATM. There are 760 TOR for every one ATM, so this pressure of just the hydrogen is going to be 0.942 ATMs of just the hydrogen. So 0.942 ATMs of just the hydrogen. Um, so I like this piece. Um, this piece has to be in liters, 0.159 liters. Okay, so I divided by 1,000. So I like this piece. Okay, and this has to be in Kelvin. So 24 degrees Celsius. If I add uh, 273 uh, degrees to get this into Kelvin, that's going to come out to 297 Kelvin. And I like this piece of this. So I'm going to use the pressure, the volume, and temperature of hydrogen to calculate the moles of hydrogen by using PV equals NRT. So PV equals NRT, and I'm solving for moles of hydrogen, so I divide by RT on both sides. The pressure of the hydrogen, remember, you've got to use that 0.942 version. Don't use the pressure of the water, don't use the total pressure, pressure of the hydrogen times the volume of the hydrogen, 0.159 liters, divided by R, which is a number you either memorize or get off a reference sheet, that's equal to 0 0.08206 ATM liters over mole Kelvin, and the temperature is 297 Kelvin. So in my calculator, 0.942, times one, uh, I'm sorry, times 0.159 divided by 0 0.0826 divided by 297 gives you a value of 0 0.00615. And remember, that's going to be moles because the ATMs cancel out, the liters cancel out, the Calvins cancel out, and I'm left with moles. And since all of this is of hydrogen, this is going to be moles of hydrogen. And then I'm going to do some stoichiometry. Okay. I'm going to get these moles of hydrogen over to grams of zinc by doing the following. Moles of hydrogen to moles of zinc. And then moles of zinc into grams of zinc. The mole-to-mole -mole relationship is 1 to 1. The molar mass of zinc is 65.4 grams per mole. And if I take that 0 .00615, hopefully leaving everything in the calculator, times 1 divided by 1, times 65.4, will give me an answer of 0 0.402 grams of zinc, which is our answer. So 0 0.402 grams of zinc needs to react to form this volume, temperature, and pressure of hydrogen gas. If you found this information useful, please give it a like and subscribe. Even adding that comment really helps to push this YouTube algorithm so more students can learn chemistry.